first up, let's make a rectangle. I'm going to grab the rectangle tool from the left hand side, and I'm just going to click and drag a randomly sized rectangle. This one is not filled in, and I'd like for it to have a fill but no stroke, and this is because it's going to be a lot easier for me to manipulate later on and see what I'm doing. So I'm going to add a fill over here, lowering the opacity so that I can see through it when I have multiple objects, and I'm going to get rid of the stroke. If this fill and stroke menu is not up, you can click on object, and right at the top you see fill and stroke. Okay, so let's make this sign the size I want it to be. I'm going to switch to inches. And since this is going to be read from relatively far away, maybe let's do 4 inches by 4 inches. I don't like the way that looks. Let's do 4 inches by 3 inches tall. All right, that looks better. So now what we need, we've got kind of a place that we're going to put our, our label. Let's round the corners. I'm going to double click this to pull up the rectangle tool. And I'm going to grab this circular handle at the top right. And I'm going to pull that down until it looks decently rounded. All right, let's go back to the select tool. I usually just mash escape. And what we need is a couple more things. We need a spike for this to actually go down into the ground. And we need another piece to actually lock it into place. So to make a spike, I'm actually going to use a triangle. So let's click on this create stars and polygons. And then we can change the number of corners to three, which is a triangle. And let's see what it looks like. OK, this looks pretty good. I'm going to hold control to lock it into certain rotations. And let's lock it like that. OK, so let's pull this over here. And obviously, this is not quite right just yet. So I'd like this to be significantly longer, or maybe a little bit less wide. So I'm going to hold Shift. And I'm going to scoot it this way. Shift just makes it where it stays in place, so it squishes from both sides. Next, I want to make this a little bit longer. So I'll pull this down. Maybe make it a little bit shallower. Oop. Make it a little bit skinnier. It, it just feels too large at the top to me. So hold Shift, and we'll scoot that inward a little bit. But it also feels too pointy at the end. So let's see what we can do about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, and I'm going to convert this into a, an, a path. So we'll go to Path and Object to Path. It'll look like nothing's changed. But now when I do Edit Nodes, Edit Path by Nodes, I see I actually have little nodes here. And let's see if I can make this a little bit rounder down here by just selecting that bottom node. And I'm going to say, Make it smooth. And that is hideous. Uh, let's make it symmetric, because we are going to want it symmetric, which is this button right here. And then I'm going to grab this handle and scoot that inward. So let's hold Control so I can scoot this in and keep it horizontal. You know, I see these nodes in the middle. And since this is a relatively simple shape, I don't actually think I need those nodes. And they're causing problems. So I'm going to just grab them and click Delete. And boy, that made a bit of a mess. So first, I'm going to connect these two points and make the selected segment into a line. I'm going to do the same with this one. And that's This is just so that I can make sure things are balanced. So now we're back kind of where we started. And now I'll make this one rounded. And boy, that looks gross. But once we hold Control and move this, scoot this inward, we can see we can make actually a pretty decent looking steak. Perfect. I like it. OK, so it's not connected up here. So let's fix that. We're going to use the snaps. So first, we're going to make sure that enable snapping is on. Then we're going to enable snap to bounding boxes. And I'm actually going to enable midpoints of bounding boxes, because I'm going to take the midpoint of this edge and connect it to the midpoint of that one, just like that. See? OK, so according to Inkscape, these are still two separate shapes. So I'm going to grab this one and hold Shift and grab this one. And I'm going to union these together. And then I'm going to inspect it with this Edit Paths by Nodes. Because sometimes when you do something like that, you end up with a fine line right here. And then you'd have to offset it a little bit so that you end up with two 
the two pieces joined together rather than just two pieces. Here it looks fine, so we're all good. Okay, last step, we need to add a little kind of retaining triangle down here. So I'm going to go back, grab another triangle, again holding control so that I can get it to rotate in the right way. And let's bring this over here. And maybe pull it a little bit further down. Now it's it's not in the right place just yet, so what I'm going to do is hold, grab it, hold shift, grab that one. And there are a couple of ways we can align this properly. So the first, we can just use that midpoint thing. Actually, let's let's snap to the center of bounding boxes. And this will snap it to the center of this one, which is going to be aligned vertically and horizontally. And then I'll just hold control and drag it down, which is going to snap it so that I can only move it either in X or in Y. And so that'll bring it to roughly where I want it to be. The other way I could do this is I could open up the under the object menu, go to align and distribute, which pulls up this menu over here. Well, I have to, there we go. And what I could do is I can grab this one, hold shift, grab the other one, make sure this says relative to last selected, and then I can align on the vertical axis. And then it's the same as what I was doing before. So holding control and shifting it downward a little bit. All right, last step, we need to grab this and we need to union these two together so that they're one shape because otherwise we're gonna end up cutting two pieces and that's not what we wanted to do with the laser. And then let's add text, just like we would normally add text. So uh, let's call this a tree. Obviously you should put the actual name of whatever thing it is rather than just saying tree. But, you know, you get what I'm trying to do. Okay, I said last step, but there are a couple more steps. Just cleaning things up. So first, I want this outline to be... I want this to actually have an outline rather than being filled in. And that's just because some lasers or software responds to outlines differently from, um, from filled in shapes. And then lastly, I'm going to take this tree thing and I'm going to convert it to a path by going to path and object to path. That was a lot of the word path, but you get the point. And now we are ready to go. So we can send this to our laser software and cut it out.